I was motivated to write that piece that you, you are questioning about because as a citizen and also a politician from the West Mampusi constituency, I should have profound worries about the development in the constituency. That is exactly what motivated me to write the piece. And I, I wrote it, and you, if you have read it, you will notice that the caption was that I said, and I'm performing this MCE is better than no MC. The reason being that clandestinely, the president at the behest of the Minister of Local Government, and I also said with the tacit approval of the vice president, removed the MCE for no communicated reason. Because unlike the previous situation where normally we would hear an announcement on air, that an MC of this particular area has been removed, citing some particular reasons for his removal. This time around, it was nine in a way that I described as clandestine. We only happen to have heard what happened through online portals, reported by so many other media houses. And the reasons that were cited for his removal are as absurd as the removal itself. Because he mentioned the issue that he was not presenting the party in good light, he was not in very good relationship with the party supporters and the leadership of the MPP in the constituency. And then also accused him of inefficiency as an MC. I, I, I find that to be completely absurd because the situation in Walawale constituency, in Walawale or the West Mampusi municipality, where there seem not to be no serious development taking place, is not only exclusive to the area. It is the general situation in the country based on the incompetence of this government that is doing more of rhetorics. In fact, I, they do governance of talking rather than governance of development. So there's so much noise in the system, but on the ground, there's virtually nothing happening. So in my opinion, the removal or the dismissal of the MC is simply an act of desperation from people who are powerful and helpless as far as development is concerned. And unfortunately for him, he happens to be the low-hanging fruit that they want to sacrifice to save the face of the vice president. Because he's upset for one to really accuse an MCE of inefficiency and non-development in a constituency where the vice president, the sitting vice president, hails from. If anybody has to be accused of anything, any wrongdoing or non-development in the area or inefficiency in the area, then definitely the blame lies squarely in the court of the vice president and not the MCE. In, 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 in local palace, you know that sometimes if there are no clouds up there, how do you expect the rain to occur on the ground? What powers does the, this MCE have to be able to do those things they want him to do? So for me, internal party wrangling and the fact that the man is accused of being inefficient is basically an issue that is a microcosm of the underdevelopment that is being experienced all over the country. The man is an innocent man. He's completely innocent. He's only a scapegoat that has been sacrificed to save the face of the vice president. Of course, for the be sensitive to the plight of the watermelon producers in the areas who have always produced and sometimes lose a lot of their products through uh, unavailability of ready market. It is a welcoming news that something like that can be done. But coming from the party, the MPP party, led by the vice president, I am a bit skeptical as to what impact that can cause. Because every, everybody already knows the mantra of one district, one factory, one this, one that, one that. But in reality, when you go to check, whatever you observe on the ground as a reality, it's not compatible with the noise we hear every day from their slogan hearing. So I'm hoping that this might be something different. But I really do not have faith that that particular factory, because if you have to establish a factory that will deal with watermelon, there are so many things that have to be done. It doesn't just take a factory for it to be successful. Watermelon is a crop, it's a fruit that is harvested at a certain part of the year. We are wondering how they are going to be able to increase the productivity and how much they are going to be able to buy within a period and how much they are going to pack it. If the factory is a factory that can actually recruit a lot of people as workers, most of the factories that they talk about, 
are not able to employ more than 200, 300 people. So this is actually nothing that can salvage the deplorable situation of the people. But let's keep our fingers crossed and wait to see. I'm just hopeful that it is no longer, it is just not one of their sloganeering and rhetorical statements to the media. Uh, presidencies all over the country were very often a particular MC or a DC is usually dismissed from his position and then either a minister or a deputy minister or somebody else is asked to act in the person's stead. That is not new. What is peculiar and unfortunate about the situation of uh, the dismissal of the, mun the municipal chief executive in Wale Wale is the fact that one, it was done in a very clandestine manner. At the moment, the people of the Wale Wale municipality or the West Mampresi municipality are not even aware of who is in charge of the municipality because it was not announced. All of us never heard anything. It was in the grapevine that we heard that he was dismissed until later on we saw the online portals reporting it. So at the moment, the people of the area in the first village do not even know who has been asked to act. Now, but what is also different about this particular issue is that very often when an MCE or a DCE is dismissed, there's usually the district assembly presided over by the presiding member that can still conduct the day-to-day -day business of the assembly, taking decisions for which perhaps whosoever is acting in collaboration with the district uh, director might see to the implementation of this act. But in this particular circumstance, if they were thoughtful, they would have realized that the district assemblies had been dissolved. And once the district assemblies have been dissolved, and you remove the DCE, you are virtually closing down that particular district. If the, the regional minister or the deputy regional minister or whosoever is being asked to act, on whose decisions is the person acting? This is a violation of the local government act because no other person has the mandate to take decisions to be implemented in the district assembly except the district assembly made up of the elected and the appointed district assembly members presided over by the, the presiding member. So in this particular period where we do not have the district assembly in place, elected assemblymen, we don't also have an MCE in place, whosoever is active, whose decision is the person implementing. This is a clear violation of the provisions of the local government. And I thought that the minister of local government would have known better in taking that decision.